ていうか田んぼ学校の許可取ってないでしょもちろんです。Well, if Milky Holmes can do it, Downsy has that big a deal. I really should get back to that series. <laughs> We open this week with Koshitan taking in the blooming Sakura to welcome in her senior year for the second time in the show. Yeah, it was hinted at a little in the last episode, but as it turned out, they were indeed stuck in a time. This is not a lie! 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 However, the return of spring ended up putting Nokotan in a terrible mood, though not because both of our shows are coming to an end soon, but rather because of hay fever. Of course, she believed that as a deer, she couldn't get such human afflictions, forgetting that she's also made to being a deer and human hybrid. As a result, she ended up turning into one of those things from Yoshi's Island and also made this lovely face. Neko Neko saw this as an opportunity to disband the Deer Club, not realizing that cats can't actually get hay fever just like humans, so she was actually doubly allergic to pollen. <laughs> Kinu, you really gotta stop watching those M. Night Shyamalan films. Those will give you the real brain rots. Anyway, Nokotan got so frustrated with her allergies that she even considered actually disbanding the Deer Club over it. Thus, Koshitan tried to help clear up her sinuses by first letting her wash her face a little, which did help, but something else needed a lot more washing. Ah, you do realize you're replacing that pollen with some mildew, right? Well, actually no, as apparently not only could the pollen quickly be replaced, but also plant themselves on her. Rather appropriate considering what the next segment's gonna be all about. <laughs> anyway, even when they tried some actual solutions that people do use to counter hay fever IRL, the deer girl's antlers couldn't be easily protected. <laughs> Says the girl who sold her voice to the Vocaloid gods. Eventually, having suffered so much from her allergies, Nokotan decided to call in the troops and enact her solution, or rather, revenge against the cedar trees. And interestingly enough, they basically call back to two episodes here with Nokotan's explosive antlers from the fifth episode and her shedded ones from the seventh. Thus, according to her, she had a whole armory raid to declare war against the Cedar Federation, which even Neko Neko was on board for. Okay, between this and Battle Spirits, how do I keep referencing the guys from Germany? However, Koshitan had a much better solution that would result in a colony drops, and instead just took both of the animal girls to the vet, though I think they might prefer the headshots. The second segment of the episode featured, as we mentioned, Nokotan trying something different from all of the deer stuff. As a result, she didn't end up showing up to their club room for about a week, leaving Koshitan worried that they might lose their funding without an actual deer there, so she went out looking for her. And she ended up finding Nokotan at the Flower Arrangement Club, where of course everyone was obsessed with her, including even the actual instructor, who found her when she was planting her antlers. Well, as someone who's taken a few Ikebana classes, I can at least say she has a good sense of symmetry. From there, she finished her arrangement, the same way I would top off a casserole. Seriously, rich crackers are an amazing topping. As for what she decided to title her little piece... <laughs> So, I actually looked this up, and Kenshi Yonezu is indeed a music artist who started his career by making Vocaloid songs under the name Hachi. In particular, he produced one of my personal favorite Miku songs, Close and Open, The Rock Shot, and The Corpse. Needless to say, I kind of wish Koshitan had gotten a musical number this episode, but whatever. The song Nokotan referenced here was actually called Horse and Deer, and actually didn't have anything to do with either animal, and was more of a love song about a couple hooking up for the first time and acting like stupid kids as a result. Thus, the title was actually more a play on words, as the kanji for horse and deer are what formed the ever-classic Baka. <laughs> Yeah, it feels kind of appropriate for a show like this. Anyway, she then proceeded to look at the other club members' arrangements, one of which I'm pretty sure should have set off her allergies again. However, this did lead to one of my low-key favorite bits of this episode, where she was supposed to give advice, and she totally and very clearly BS'd her way through it. And as a result of her sage-like wisdom, she created a little shop of horrors. <laughs> 
Didn't you pull out a ton of deer crackers in the last episode? So, after some awful guitar playing and plan for it because the show doesn't have enough fetishes, she completely won over the flower arrangement club and they wanted to make her a regular member. However, Nokotan of course declined and just went back to her old club. That was pointless. The final segment was the long-awaited Mimi Ricefield episode that they themselves even pointed out. Thus, for the occasion, she also wanted to turn this into an uncle episode, but of course she was just there for her sister. Fortunately, Suchi was willing to help, or at least that's what Mimi could interpret from her little staring contest with it. Surprisingly enough though, it actually did get into it, and even ended up getting into a competition with Mimi. <laughs> Yeah, not surprisingly, an episode like this makes me feel like I've been stoned out of my pants. Why does it feel so drafty? All that said, this did lead to a nice moment between her and Uncle, with the latter noticing how much hard work she was putting in, and maybe even feeling bad that she totally ditched her, so she decided to make some rice balls. And it was legit one of the most wholesome and real moments in the series, coming from uncle of all characters, though maybe that's also part of the reason. Between her and Mei Mei, they both are kind of one note characters just being all about their obsessions, be it Koshitan or Rice respectively. So actually seeing them bond was not just a nice shippy moment, but also a good moment to show that they're not just obsessive weirdos. Hell, they even made for a decent comedy duel, as the episode ended with Mei Mei thinking of what they could raise on her farm next, which included chickens who could give them eggs, and Uncle could make them into yakitori. This was a pretty good episode, if a bit of a mixed bag. Like, I don't think there was any truly boring or bad moment to this one. Hell, I'd say I actually appreciated how chill Mei Mei and Uncle segment was. But some of the best and most laughable moments did feel like they were a bit too few and far between for my taste at least. Easily, my favorite segment of this episode was the first one about hay fever, just for the simple fact that it was a case where we didn't get to see the usual invincible Nokotan. Now, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy when she's clearly trolling and having a lot of fun at other people's expense, especially Koshitan's, but I also did like to see the dear girl be more of a victim of circumstances. Nowhere near as much a butt monkey as her friend, but enough so that she became a quarter deer. And when you core an animal, they do tend to lash out, which led to some seldom seen truly chaotic energy from this character. Thus, not only was it interesting to see this new side to Nokotan, but of course, it was hilarious to see the Principality of Dion declare war. Hearing Megami Han pull our best gear and zombie impersonation was just amazing, and kind of ironic considering her last Gundam role was as Sela in the Kukuro's Island movie. Meanwhile, everything else in the episode was just kind of okay. The flower arrangement segment didn't have quite as many good jokes other than maybe the vor plant at the end. Fortunately though, the last segment with Meme and Uncle did kind of make up for it by not being all that funny, but more of a good character building story between the two main supporting characters of the show. Uncle in particular kind of needed it so that she's not just a total yande for her sister. She and Meme did make for a cute and pretty funny secondary pairing alongside the main two of the show. And overall, this was a fine enough episode with just a kind of meh middle part, but at least a pretty great opener and touching little closer. If you happen to suffer from hay fever, maybe consider getting some nasal sprays, and hey, if worse comes to worse, you can always deploy a Zaku or two. Thank you for watching, and as always, be sure to check out some of our other videos on this channel. For those who haven't seen it at this point, we did start reviewing Kamen Rider Gab, and we'll cover some new shows once the fall season comes around. Look forward to it, until then though, fair for now, my friend. Hey, what happened to my hat? Ah, damn it, did someone try to headshot me again? Yep.